And this is the classic problem of education and minorities. When we think as systems about minority populations, we always think about medicine, right? Give them some medicine. When we think of general education, we always think of nourishment. <laughs> when you look at the remedial programs and you look at their presumptions, when you look at the remedial minority offices, you see, their you see the words like retention, which sound like kidney ailments. <laughs> huh? Not the advancement of students. And we keep falling into this trap. Only when we began to realize that we had to locate the strengths to find the teachers who survived and flourished and work with them to prepare enrollment were we able to really change the character of minority science involvement at Berkeley. Right? Moving from 44 black students to 579, about 150 of them interested in math and science and prepared for it. And almost all of those were prepared by strong high school teachers who we served as basically consultants, as aides. This was the greatness of Leon Henkin, my advisor, who pointed out that if you want to learn about schools as a university person, take a semester and serve as a classroom aide. Keep your mouth closed, hand out the papers, and watch real teachers. Right, and then you'll understand the real life of schools. So this is three waves. Fourth, now we have successful students in number, we have some failures, and we have lots of people asking the following question. Well, we know that the only places that produce minority students in number right, are places where faculty members have been able to work on the problem as part of departmental life. If you look nationally at NSF minority graduate fellows, they don't come across fields from any particular institution. They tend to come in a particular field from an institution. And when you go there, you see the power of teachers. And you don't see young teachers with lots of energy. As they say, it's not the young sap that holds up the tree, it's the old dead wood. <laughs> huh? You see veterans who are in a position of authority, ex-department chairs, people who've been around long enough right, to know what kind of changes are sustainable, who are in a position to be able to work on these issues as part of their real departmental life. You see Stanford producing black physics students. You see Xavier of New Orleans producing uh, health profession students. Berkeley now producing math students. Each case, it's faculty. So now comes the last little strip of onion uh, until we get to the next strip. It's how in universities, how do we really uh, redefine what faculty work is? In a place like CUNY, uh -huh. this is really about producing the next generation of New Yorkers <laughs> and of citizens. Uh -huh. Tremendous opportunity. But yet we, right, as faculty, are still living in a situation from another time, right? 1960s maybe. Uh -huh. We're still defining ourselves in the post-Sputnik way. Right? Sort of very narrow, right? research only. Higher education has democratized. We now have 12 million students. Back then we had 3 million. But fa you know, so everyone perceives that students are getting weaker, not realizing the tremendous democratization of higher education. Mm -hmm. Whereas the faculty role is, continues to get narrower and narrower and more hierarchical. Californians like earthquake metaphors. This is one. If people are going to work on these questions, it can't be you uh, work with the black kids and you play golf. It has to be centrally connected to departmental life, to what the definition of faculty and teaching work is in universities. And when you think about it this way, you realize that everything in the way we're reviewed in departments is individual. Right? Focuses on the individual, individual productivity. Nobody in universities thinks about the collective responsibilities we have as departments and as members of our discipline. Right? The president will come by, you'll excuse me, president will come by with a new mission every five years. But because departmental review and budgeting, the things that really functionally define our work never change, we can just hunker down and know it'll go away. Right? The real issues now of access, given that our institutions look like America, is to redefine faculty roles in a broader way. And we have to do this not only for access, we have to do this for our own human lives. So many people trapped by a definition of work that has nothing to do with who they are anymore. 
When this system was put in place, no one thought of the natural life cycle of researchers. No one thought of the natural life cycle of faculty. No one thought that people are not going to do the same thing for 25, 30, or 35 years, although some may, right? Many won't. And the heart now of the issue and the challenge is to find ways to redefine our professional lives so that we can represent our disciplines, maintain a scholarly life, and serve students, right? And enable them to join in the pleasures of an academic life and a scholarly life. Yeah. So in the end, it's a discovery that improving education is very different than improving teaching. Right? In the beginning, it's natural to think that we have the power to control the world. Sure, getting better as teachers has to be done and matters. But the real issues have to do with our collective responsibilities. Curriculum. Yes, we can have special programs. Notice in CN in CUNY, virtually all the students are in high courses that used to be called high school. Virtually none of the senior faculty ever see those students. Almost all of the senior faculty are working with maybe 5% of the student body, 10% of the student body. Yeah. It's sort of, there's a line in a black rap song, I get to listen to these things, denial ain't just another river in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can see the way it's going. Right. For our own sake, right, for the future of the things we love, and basically for justice. Should not be embarrassed to talk about justice. Right. For justice, right, we have to redefine our academic lives in ways that enable us to pass on what we care about and to open opportunities for others. Okay? And the truth is that we are the conservative force. Okay? The solution lies with us, and it is faculty that are the conservative force. Administrators, this is a great revelation for me, <laughs> that in fact, administrators, by dealing with the public, right, and dealing with legislatures, understand who the clients of the institution are. Uh, we have visions of being in uh, an institution from another time. Uh, we need to essentially redefine our lives as faculty members, otherwise they'll be redefined from outside. Thank you. <laughs>